2022 Voice Actor Q&A panel. And so we're going to go ahead. We're going to go right ahead and get started. So first person with a question, please come on up. Or raise your hand, both works. Will, did I just talk to the mic? Yeah. Actually, before we begin, um, for those of you who are here, how many? How long have you been here? Both days? Those of you, raise your hand if you've been here both days. How many of you have gone to panels? Okay. For those of you who have gone to panels, the panel programming was done by this lovely lady right here. So Should we introduce ourselves? Oh yeah, we could do that. Here, yeah, just, we'll get you. Yeah. We'll get you. What do I do? You're gonna be first in line, I promise. Lauren, why don't you? What me? Start, what about start on an end? Start on an end. Yes, take it. And you're gonna say hand the mic. Hi, I'm Wendy Powell. Um, I've been here a lot, so I know most of you. I'm most known for Beyond Full Model Alchemist, Mature on You Hockey Show, Miyazaki on Prince of Tennis. Um, Alina on Claymore, Miss Merry Christmas on One Piece, and I'm just really happy to be here. Yeah! Barry and uh, William T. Spears, Black Butler, um, bon, bon Clay on One Piece, yeah. <laughs> Little Demon on Soul Eater, and um, a plethora of other wonderful. Oh, Bob! Um, on fairy tale, <laughs> who I based a character on my high school algebra teacher, who also looked like a bald drag queen, <laughs> and she still does if she's alive. But anyway, and my new hit show that I'm actually going to sit down and watch, and I can't wait as soon as I figure out how to log in the Crunchyroll. Spy <laughs> Family, because I love being elegant. <laughs> Very elegant. Don't let him fool uh, you. Uh, like Wendy, I have also been here many, many times. So you guys probably know who I am, but if you don't, I'm Lauren Landa. Uh, you guys might know me as the voice of Annie Lionheart from Attack on Titan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, voice of Merlin from Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, Sailor Neptune from Sailor Moon. Uh, Um, let's see what else. Uh, I was also uh, uh, Juno and B Stars. If you guys haven't seen B Stars, that's great. Uh, and uh, uh, most recently, you guys can hear me as Shirakawa in Odd Taxi, which is a great show if you haven't seen it. Um, and I can't remember what else because when we start to list credits, our brains go blank. So, yes. yes. They die. They die. They die. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. No, that's just you and Attack on Titan. That's just me. Speaking of this. Jessica Cavanaugh, and um, I voice a lot of moms and some other people. So, <laughs> Inko Midoriya and My Hero Academia. I'm not going anywhere without her again. Um, um, Carly Yeager and Attack on Titan. <laughs> um, Aquarius and Fairy Tale. Um, the best key out of all of them. She's the most sassy. Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you see her? Um, um, and Moeka and Steins Gate and Rui and Codebreaker and Curly Dadon and One Piece. Uh, and that's all I can remember. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Anthony Bowling. Uh, I'm a voice actor and director. Um, I, I guess voice acting, uh, most recently, Frankie Franklin, Spy Family, Alciel, Devil's a Part-Timer, uh, Seiya, Incautious Hero, uh, Chrome in Bafuri, Chromo, he's a good boy. Uh, I don't know, I've done a lot of work. I've been doing this for like 18 years. Uh, I've directed a lot as well. Um, Day Day Live Season 3, Our Last Crusade, Mix Mesa Story, and then for the past three years I've been directing One Piece. Uh, I'm directing, yeah, thank you, a little show called One Piece. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I got to work with many of these wonderful actors, so One Piece has given me so much. Uh, and I'm also directing uh, Film Red right now uh, and that's getting ready very soon 
Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you all so much. This is my first NDK, so. <laughs> right next to you. <laughs> Name the other ones we're first, though. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, check it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm super elated to be here, and it's been so wonderful meeting all of you guys. So, yeah. yes. <laughs> this is my first time here, too, and you guys are rad, rad, rad. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Uh-oh, get ready. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, <laughs> it's my first convention in Denver here. I'm scientist, but hey, how you doing? I'm Bill Butts. Uh, my first NDK, as I'm with that here, uh, I'm also in a little show called One Piece, directed by someone <laughs> who resides just over there. One Piece uh, is in six. <laughs> it's about you, Bill. Uh, I'm actually uh, Jack the Drive in a little show called One Piece. If you like Jujutsu Kaisen, I'm Miguel, one of the two people that Gojo can't kill. Uh, let's see, I'm in Godzilla, I'm Zombies of Resident Evil, I'm Kyosuke Hori, with a little show called uh, Oh, Hori Mia. List goes on. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. Hi, I'm. Hi. Is this... <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Jim Peronda. Uh, I've been. Gosh, first anime I was in was Case Closed. I got killed on a cruise ship. Uh, <laughs> and uh, anything from golly, Full Metal Alchemist to more recent stuff. Um, oh gosh, I'm all over One Piece. Like sprinkled like pepper across the thing. Uh, probably <laughs> Vander Decken, you might remember, from hey. the Fishman Island arc. And uh, Barriente, the screeching monkey from the Wano arc most recently. <laughs> and uh, oh gosh, uh, I'm, I'm now Claptrap in, uh, in, in Borderlands and Wonderlands. And, and if, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. It's the most fun I've had in the show in a long time. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, second. One piece of second. How are you? I'm the voice of Luxion, the most powerful microtransaction in the world. Uh, and, uh, and, and he's a lot of fun. This, 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 this fella right here. It's just, oh, it's such a good You're job. also on Prince of Tennis with me. Oh, yes, I am on Prince of Tennis with me. Uh, yes. I talk to I'm, you a lot, I, so I, I know I, that. I, uh, I'm a reporter, really boring. But um, I could go on again as well. But as we have some job. <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, my name is John Swayze. This is my second uh, MDK in a row. And, uh, before you clap, there was a problem last year. This is actually part of my community service. <laughs> anyway, we're still having a great time. Um, some of the roles that I've done are Crocodile from One Piece. <laughs> Uh, Gendo from Evangelion, Lord Death from Soul Eater, Undertaker from Black Patla, uh, Hohenheim from Full Metal Alchemist, and uh, of course, um, well, in uh, Borderlands 2, I play Salvador and uh, Dodoria from DBZ, and then uh, All for One from My Hero Academia. And, um, thank you. If y'all are anybody reading the manga, yes. Yes. so you know what's about to come down. So we're, we're very excited here. It's all for one man. But uh, basically, I play a lot of dads and a lot of bad guys, and a lot of times they're the same guy. So, um, anyway, but just glad to be here. Thrilled to be here with my daughter and uh, all these amazing actors who I've uh, gotten to know a lot, a lot of uh, over the years and, and making new friends as well this time. So it's one of the, one of the main reasons I love coming to conventions is, is making new friends. So thank you all for having me. Hi, I'm Major Hadaway. I'm John's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> We have a legacy panel tomorrow. We have a legacy panel. <laughs> 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 
Oh my gosh. Um, hi guys, I'm Major Emily. It's my second indicator row as well. Glad to be back. Um, some of the characters I played are Dark Lord Xenos on Fruit of Evolution. Um, Descari, the big bad on The Wrath of Righteous. Um, I'm Clay in Borderlands 3. Uh, I was the genie in Aladdin on Broadway for four years. And um, Uroge in One Piece. Yes. Happy to be here. Let's do the thing. <laughs> Sorry, the red, you had a question. Yes. Now it's your time. Now it's your time to shine. Hey, uh, before you do, though, let me yeah, just say that. He's messing with you. He's messing with you. I can't believe your daughter has to deal with you. <laughs> Nor can I. Gosh, you stole my joke before I could even say it. Hey, I, I have an annoying dad too, so it's it's a good good thing. So I had to write these questions down because you guys are all so amazing. Uh, but I have uh, one question for John Swayze and one for uh, Barry Endell. So I was just wondering for you, uh, what is your favorite uh, type of character to voice Villains or heroes and why? And for Barry, I, um, has there ever been a time that yes. you've been stumped by a line that you had to say and found too funny to say out loud? <laughs> wow, <laughs> so, uh, I need to think about okay. Well, first of all, yes, um, I would not play a hero because heroes suck. <laughs> And if it weren't for the villains, heroes would really just look like complete idiots. <laughs> so the, the heroes can go suck it. <laughs> villains are where it's at. I agree. Um, plus, I'm not a 15-year-old pubescent boy, so I, I really can't do that. So, um, Barry, how you coming down there? I'm running out of line. <laughs> I want to answer your question because I agree with you. Villains all the way. I mean, I'm dying to be Ursula in Little <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm friends with Jody, but she has no power. Ariel. Um, I, I can't think of any. And I will say this I've, I've lived my life to make people laugh. If you can make me laugh, and people on this stage have. You really achieved something. I don't laugh a lot. I'm not a miserable person. It just takes a lot to make me laugh. I hate joy. <laughs> so, I guess. So, if I if I get you know I just you get out of the shower and catch yourself in the mirror, that's funny. I'm gonna answer your question. Go ahead. Because we were at your house. Do you want to tell that story that we were just reading? Yeah. Well, there's nothing he can't read and make it funny. Literally a magazine he did. So. We did play it. She was over there. We played this game called. I, I own two Airbnbs. That night it was called New Cell Phone, New Dis. <laughs> and I would just read these random lines, and one of them that she got such a kick oh out, God. she was peeing on my. I had to wipe up on my. Was just a line that says, "Let's says, let's go." Let's go to the park and feed the ducks. I've got bread. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny, but she puddles. Thank you for the question, Matt. I've got bread. Just come right on up to the Here we go. Um, what would you guys say the biggest risk you've taken with acting is? Ooh, I love that. Ooh, I can answer. I can answer. For um, all of us? <laughs> yes. Maybe. I don't know. I just decided to major in theater. I just graduated in May with an acting degree, um, which is lovely, but it means I have nothing to fall back on. Um, so it was definitely the right risk. I'm really glad I took it. Um, but you know, I've signed up for not so much of a lucrative career, so I'm looking forward to it. Should be fun. <laughs> So I'm a type 1 diabetic and like not dying as a diabetic is really expensive. And so I got laid off from my day job in 2013 and I thought if I don't try to do voice acting full time now, I'm never going to get around to do it. And um, luckily I've been able to do it and still not die. <laughs> Let's 
going to be weird too, like when you do die and go to heaven. And they're going to go, what do you think your greatest achievement is? They're going to go, not that, oh. I had a really good one up until about a minute ago. <laughs> and I'm that street bro. Uh, I've, I've had personally, I think, choosing to not audition for something uh, has been one of the scariest things, but knowing, getting to a point where you know kind of yourself, your limitations, your time constraints, what you can do, it can be the most terrifying thing to look at a show coming through that you know might be the next big thing and say, it's not for me, I, I, I don't have time for this, it's not my range, I, I can't, you know, that, that for me was kind of the biggest risk, but what it does produce is a lot more peace and happiness uh, so that you can explore the things you really want to do and you can put your effort into so that you're not stretching yourself thin. Uh, so that's always scary to do. Mine is the exact same, but I would just apply it to the theater space. Um, you know, after, after doing eight shows a week and proving that you can do that, all the auditions that came in were for more of that same work or for more of dedicating all of my energy to, to that. And so agreeing to be a novice again and staying, you know, dedicating myself to making money in my booth closet um, is pretty wild and I'm dedicated and we're going to win this. So. Yeah, yeah. I'll just add to that. So when I, uh, I'm from Houston and um, I was making a, a very good living as an actor, doing a lot of voice work um, and uh, working for companies like you for Tracy Locke and stuff. I mean, yeah. the stuff you were working for anyway doing commercials and film and television. And uh, somebody said, you ought to do anime. And I was like, you know, what's anime? <laughs> they said, well, it's Japanese animation. And I was like, Lionel speak Japanese, so. <laughs> they said, no, 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 we, we dug it. And I said, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll try. So I went to the audition, a little company in town called ADV Films, which is now Sentai Filmworks. Well, I walked into the audition at the, you know, this is going to sound braggadocious, but I was at the top of my game doing other stuff in Houston. And I walked in, no clue how to do this ADR stuff, and I absolutely tanked the audition. I mean, I was just, I looked like an idiot. And they were like, well, thanks for coming in, you know, whatever. And I left, and uh, I sat in my car for about five minutes, and I was just like, I know I can do a better job. And... I, so I went back in and asked him, I said, I, I will wait till the end of the day and get all these other people, but may I have another opportunity? And they said, yes. So I waited. But I looked back and I think, you know, I could have just said, screw anime. <laughs> I didn't know how to spell it. <laughs> and uh, then I wouldn't be where I am today. And now, you fast forward in my life, 27 years later, all I do is I direct full time, I act full time, and I go to conventions full time. So I don't even do film and television and radio anymore. All I do now is anime. It's my entire life. So. Who else? Yeah, come on up. Uh, so do you ever find at any time of the day, like if you're frustrated or super happy or whatnot, you slip into a specific character? like? I think all those voices are inside our heads somewhere, yeah. and I can tell you I have definitely screamed some absurd pieces <laughs> and everything else in character voices, but I think they're all in us anyway. They're part of like... Uh, Mama Inko comes out of me when I'm around children and they're doing something dangerous or something that's like, oh, be careful. Like, <laughs> Out of my mouth, yeah. I'll say Kyosuke Hori from Hori Mia is just me. That is me to an absolute extreme. When I'm in Los Angeles traffic, I am every villain I've ever played. <laughs> I do a lot of character work, so I'm always just like coming up with new sounds and stuff, much to my wife's lament. If, uh, like, if, if something happens, like if, I, if I'm stuck in traffic or if I hit my foot on something, something new will come out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, if I'm talking to the cat, you know, it's, it's, it's new stuff all the time and somehow we're still married. <laughs> I, I will say, uh, you know, going back when I started doing anime, you know, the screw in my glasses right here, 
that's about how many people knew about anime, right? That's the level. <laughs> now it's, it's so prolific. And uh, so sometimes I'll just be out, you know, and I'll like I'd be at a bar or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, I'd like to get a beer, please. <laughs> Some people will go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do you do voice work by any chance? <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> oh my God! And then I'll just go get it because so many people know this now. It's so prolific that it's. I mean, Olivia and I were in the airport in Chicago, and we were checking our bags. <laughs> Late, the the people behind the counter were like, they saw our, these things, you know, and they're like. Oh my God, real! And they were like, "Wait a minute, John Swayze, <laughs> get him! Get him! <laughs> he's the yes, new <laughs> There he is!" I used to, used to, I still do. Uh, whenever I would get into fights with partners or anything like that, roommates, um, I'll slip into some character voices. It pisses them off. So much. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. They hate it. Um, uh, that's when I slip into character voices for sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And see. Anyone else have a question? Yeah, questions. Keep them going. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Race, race. Let's get the line going. Fight, fight, fight. Oh, oh, man. What a gentleman. What a gentleman. Yeah. 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 you were in JoJo, so slightly offended for JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> um, second of all, also my first time at NBK. Um, my question is, what is your most rewarding part of being a voice actor? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bump because you know it talks a lot. So I'm trying to share the floor. But it seriously, I cannot tell you. It sounds like I'm just kissing up to you. I'm kind of new to the con scene and it's, it's those con interactions. A couple of weeks ago, just real quick, there was this guy who was about 25 years old, and he came up and he said that he, he started working with a friend of his whose mom had passed away last week, and he didn't really know him that well. And he asked him if he wanted to go to the con, and the guy couldn't afford it. And he said, he just happened to mention that Von Clay was his favorite character ever, and I just wanted to bring some joy to him, so he bought a print, and I said, hey, I want to do you a solid. Don't expect the same. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> unless you have a coupon. But anyway, I said, would your friend, do you think he would like me, you know, saying something to him? And, but, and so he filmed me and he kind of started shaking and I thought, well, maybe he has, you know, some sort of condition, bless his heart. No, and he finished and he was bawling. Aww. And he said, thanks, man, thanks. Well, then I started crying. And then he walked away and turned back. He was like, Aww. those moments. They're, you know, we like to pay our bills. Please come to our tables and buy things. Because <laughs> that electricity is so expensive these days. But I, you can't buy moments like that. And it happens at cons. And it happens because of people like you. And we are so grateful. So thank you very much. So it's because you. Thanks. Actually, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, this is a big one, and uh, I'll condense to maybe like a couple minutes. It's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> when I was just cosplaying about 14 years ago, I ran into a gentleman named Keith Silverstein. And what's rewarding to me is I had known maybe just two, Keith and Bo Billingsley of black people who actually voiced anime characters. And I had a long time with Keith. He encouraged me. Went to school, got the theater degree, and everything walked on up there to eventually uh, voicing anime. So for me, the most rewarding thing is being that. Rewarding the next generation, people who can see, people who look like them, voicing these characters that they love, and seeing that it's possible for them. So for me, that is the most rewarding. Uh, so, my mother died by suicide in 2008, and um, um, 
there was a character I voiced in Battleborn named Isaac. And um, uh, somebody sent a letter to Gearbox. And um, it was a. Uh, you know, the kingdom, you know, kingdom. Anyway, to make a long story short, um, they said that uh, there was something about the character's personality that they found in themselves. That they found that it was okay that you can you can be angry, but it doesn't make you a bad person. And um, they uh, did not kill themselves because of that. And uh, yeah, that was. Uh, God, I, I did not expect that much. <laughs> <laughs> world, as we all know, there are gazillions of fans, um, and they're all across, and I don't mean the spectrum spectrum, but they're all across the spectrum of life. I mean, everything, uh, you know, from autism to LGBT to anything, anything there is, you can imagine, there are fans of this genre. And um, I was, too, at a convention one time, and the lady that ran it said, I want you to meet my son because you saved his life. And I said, what are you talking about? I've never met your son. She goes, no, but he loves your character, Gendo, from Evangelion. In fact, he now has changed his name to Gendo. And he dresses every day as Gendo. And so when you see him, please address him as Gendo. And I said, okay. <laughs> and he was in the hospital. He tried to take his own life, and he didn't know what to do. And somebody said, watch Evangelion. And Gendo is this horrible, horrible person. I don't know why that changed. <laughs> it did. He just related. He connected. And now he is off living a great life as, as Gendo, but he's, he's living. You know what I mean? So, yeah, dude, that's, it's fantastic. And you never know, any one of us, you just never know how we're going to uh, impact and affect somebody. And uh, one of the things that I've all... I've, preach and, and we're all I know these folks up here and they're all very humble and they're uh, you know they're honored we're all honored that we're even here but one of the things about this is when somebody comes up to you and they're shaking and they're just about to cry and they're so thrilled that you gave them an autograph and all this our it's, it's very uh, uh, our first instinct is to go dude it's no big deal man I'm just a person just like you it's nothing it's no big deal but it is a big deal. It, and it's not to sound like a braggart, but we are not here to steal anyone's joy. We're here to bring joy. And so we need to make sure that we always do that. And um, so to me, that's, that's the most important thing is that um, when you can touch somebody's life like you did mm -hmm. and, and make them, whether it's live or, or just you know feel good about themselves and that kind of thing, that, I, I tell you, that is more rewarding than any show we've ever done or any gazillion of autographs or anything we've ever done. That, to me, is the most important and, and rewarding thing that I could ever ask for. So. Now I'm going to cry. Right. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we don't need to hear my dad cry. Please come on. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, I was wondering, how, how important is uh, source material in characterization? As in, when are you listening to the original work and saying, I'm emulating this character, as opposed to, you know, kind of putting your own thing on it, or even making kind of your own character, or is that how it is all the time? I'm kind of interested in that spectrum of how that works. So for auditions, we get we, we are only listening to that for tone, pretty much. I mean, at least I am. I'm not trying to match the, the read exactly, but I'm trying to get within the range. I mean, obviously, if they're way up here, I'm not reading for it. So I'm looking for a range and a tone um, that I can fit. That's what I'm doing. I don't know what they do because they work more than me. But uh, <laughs> that's I, I may learn something right now, but that's all I'm looking for. His tone and inflection. Uh, starting from that, because you were wrote for a long time, and I think from going source to that, especially seeing in each stage of writing, directing, acting, source material is we have to listen to the licensor. Ultimately, they are paying the company to make their product. This is not us making anything. They came to us, so we're kind of contract workers. 
So, a lot of times, source material can either be, you need to say exactly this, or it can be like, hey, we trust you, have fun, <laughs> cast who you want. Uh, I know I can only speak for myself, uh, like on One Piece. Toei can be very strict and say, you send this actor directly to us and we'll take six months to decide who that actor is. Uh, don't change this word, change that word. Like, we'll get pickups the day before these things are due. Uh, so that, that can be super important. And when you're looking at that and finding tone, uh, so I know when I direct, trying to find that, but then letting the actor find the character through that. And that's the director's job to say, I know what the, the big picture is, here's the tones that we need, do what you do. And kind of trust that. Like so. our version of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I can only speak from that part. One thing about anime is that sometimes we, um, you know, we'll go into the booth and here's the character that you're starting out with and you, you just get that initial, um, what's happening in that scene. But if there's, if there's source material for, uh, that you can read ahead, you could find out, well, what is this person ultimately going to do? What are their plans? And that way it's, it's, it's easier to get into the character knowing what they're all about. Are they, you know, like, all for one? They, they, what is his ultimate plan? Well, obviously, <laughs> his ultimate plan is. But it's uh, it's it's. Actually, it's, I know, don't. I wish I, I wish I did. Oh, okay. No, I, I I like I like reading ahead so I know yes. what my character. Plan is. See, I love just discovering them in the moment because that's the character doesn't know what's happening next. So I kind of like evolving with it and not knowing so. I like that too. That's yeah. a new method that I'm kind of discovering. I'm pretty new to the industry, so I'm still kind of like gauging what in my most productive and effective uh, way of recording and building a character is. So from my training in school, building a whole character arc for the character helps a lot, but it also keeps it really, really genuine when you're just like, mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell's coming up yeah. next. Like, right, especially really because cool. the director will always know, or they should, mm -hmm. and so they can help you and steer you in different directions if, if what you're doing. I, I've kind of come to really enjoy not knowing what's coming to. Um, and yeah, I would never say that for a role I'm playing in theater or right. any, any other medium, you know? Like, I don't want to discover scene by scene. Yeah. But like, there is really something about uh, finding out, as long as you trust your director <laughs> yeah. to guide you in the way you should go. And for those of you that are interested in this, you future voice actors, commercial, I'm doing a panel tomorrow called The Actors' Launch. And people used to ask me, how do you do this, how do you do this? I was like, I don't know, I'll just do it. But that wasn't helping anybody, so I sat up by my pond. I sat up by my pond and I came up with a seven step system. It's purely mine and other people might totally disagree with it, but it has to do with, you know, building these believable characters in the moment. So you might want to check it out uh, tomorrow. Not sure what time, but see you there. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll watch source material for the like cadence and the rhythms. So it helps me get that rhythm in my body so that I, because I know I have to match flaps either way, right? And so I try and get that out of the way first so that I can live as that character under the rhythm that has already been there. That's, yeah. I know most of the, the source material that you're going to get, I mean, is, the first thing we get as an actor is to listen to whatever the Japanese actor did. And hopefully, either you're auditioning or you've been cast, um, the director knows hey, this is in your wheelhouse, this is what you can do, so I'd like you, you know, uh, this is why you're auditioning for this, or this is why I cast you. But as a director, I also always listen, when I bring an actor in, I let, say, listen to, what the, let's listen to the Japanese, like uh, they've all said, get an idea for the tone. Um, we are bound by lip flaps, but we also make sure that, like, you know, if it's an off-screen line and it lasts, five seconds, I don't want the English version to last four seconds. I want it to try to get as close to five seconds as possible. You know, um, we do bring our own spin to this thing, but at the end of the day, we're dubbing it, because it was already done. So we're dubbing it Simpsons into English. English. And yeah. we, can't, we can't change up stuff. Like, I mean, I, the example I like to use is in Jaws, you know, when, when Brody backs up into the cabin of the boat after he's seen the shark, and he goes, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Well, it would make no sense if it was in Spanish, and the Spanish actor just went, 
Ay caramba! You know, or something like that. You have to match what's going on in the Japanese. Another question. Another question. Yeah, there was someone else over here. There we go. Oh, People come out. Yeah. If you need to make a line, yeah, yeah, make, a line. Yeah, make a line so you don't lose it. Yeah. Hello. 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 That, that last one kind of answered it. <laughs> I, love, I love your shirt. Yes, Thank you. Great. I love your shirt. Um, one of the questions I wanted was, what are what are challenges in directing with an anime that uh, somebody directing a Western um, cartoon wouldn't quite understand the same? Oh, like relay versus dubbing, you yeah. know. Oh. And uh, I'm also I'm also a little curious about him playing the genie. Thank <laughs> 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 you. All right, but, but you, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> uh, what, what, you said curious about me playing the genie. What? Yeah, like what's something that was interesting and fun about? You go first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some of the challenges directing that that kind of our lost series is literally well, I was going to say lost in translation. There is a lot of that uh, translation verbiage um, uh, because, as I said before, we're adapting. We're not creating anything new. Um, so sometimes, I mean, that's where you might hear the most critique of, of English versus. The, either the Japanese or any other language. We're all just trying to make those touchstones um, to kind of connect to that. So that can be difficult. Um, hitting flaps, trying to match that. We uh, are very used to having, you know, Western cartoons have the prelay. So we grew up mainly watching cartoons talk like we talk. Uh, in Japan, they do prelay and they don't care. They'll just put it wherever and someone's mouth will be closed and you'll hear three different noises or they're still talking and they're like, yeah, that's anime, baby. Uh, <laughs> and that, that can happen a lot when you're trying to adapt and you have to get an entire phrase into three flaps. And then it's like, I don't know what you want us to do in that case. So it can be hard to say what looks good, sounds good, will make sense, and can you act this much in this space? And you have to roll all that up and say, cool, and let's also do this Friday. Uh, so, you know, if you can do that, you can do anything. <laughs> right there, but that's, thank you. Yes. Major. Uh, there was lots of cool moments, but one that I think is a broad stroke. So, you know, Disney and ESPN are the same company, essentially. So they sent a, um, an ESPN sports science team to the Broadway show when I was doing it. And they tracked my physical exertion through um, just the one song, Friend Like Me. And uh, just, I can't remember everything they say but from the video, but something like I was run up, running up and down a basketball court like 23 times in, in that 17 minutes or something like that. And um, about how, how my oxygen intake was and changing my is that, is that video today. on like ESPN? Or yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's living on YouTube. I showed it to my kids at school and it's amazing. Like his heart rate's better, like it's, he's exerting more energy than a football player. So uh, that's amazing. Well, yeah, they said, they said yeah, I'm like, they were, I was like a, a, like a runner, like a um, marathon runner, except I was singing at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, so some, some great things, but that, that's the, the star on this one. As, as, <laughs> as a sports guy, I really like that. Oh, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> so I, I believe, I, I could be wrong, but I, need, I believe this panel goes to 3.30. We want to answer everyone's questions, so let's just start. try and get yeah. the answers a little shorter. So we, we did start like that. Okay, oh, but I think but there's a panel after this, so yeah. Too bad. Um, how much... Effort do you put into your voicemail greetings and <laughs> <laughs> I don't hey, yo, you I, I literally don't have one at all. It's, it's the 
set to the iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> Jack puts in an insane amount of work. You would not believe it. I put in no work. <laughs> Nowhere. 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 Nah. Nah, nah. Yeah. I used to, and then uh, our booking person, Tara, this was years back, uh, I missed a call and I was like, oh, that was so dorky. And she's like, uh, we, all the actors do that. So I thought it was like, oh, okay, I don't feel so bad. But then it was like, I should just be professional. Like, like, I should just say, hi, it's Anthony, the message. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mess with telemarketers with my characters. <laughs> yes. That's, a good one. That's, That's the Lord's work. Thank you. <laughs> good. Yes. Just as a note real quick, we are able to run this panel to 45. Okay. Oh, so we get an extra 15 minutes, awesome. we're hoping to get through everyone in line, but it still might be pretty close. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yay. Awesome. I love, like, all of your guys' work. I've seen most of you in everything, and I was just wondering, what has been your favorite, like, voice to do or character to do, and could you do a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually, I was actually waiting for an opportunity to put <laughs> this I was actually just, I, I've been working on this new show called I'm Quitting Heroing, and I am absolutely loving it. It is such a cool concept for a story. Dad was talking earlier about how heroes suck because if villains didn't exist, then heroes wouldn't be heroes. That's what the show is. The hero quits being a hero, and it, it's really a fun show to work on. And I play the demon queen Echidna, and she laughs like, <laughs> And I, I like that. I have a couple. I have, I have a couple favorites because I've been doing this for about 15 years, so I can't just I've met like many of us. We can't just pinpoint one favorite because it's like choosing your favorite. Cho anyway, okay. Uh, so I have a couple. I definitely love me a little Merlin from Seven Deadly Sins. I also, <laughs> I also, you know, of course, like I said, one of my favorite anime lesbians is Sailor Neptune. Neptune Planet Power Night Off! You know, that kind of thing. And then, really? No cheering? Really? <laughs> It's so awkward when we get a light and then there's complete silence. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, and then, um, and then of course, you can't go wrong with our favorite Titan girl, which is Annie Leonhardt from uh, Attack on Titan. Scream and I slice your neck open. You know. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, it's just my voice. <laughs> so it's not really that, unless it's a big creature. Like, Jack just gives me a laugh because he's just rage embodied. And it's just right, and one more thing, I revel in destruction. Wu-Tang <laughs> <laughs> Clan is something. Oh, Wu-Tang Clan is something. I just like to say, we're all very afraid on this end of the table right now. <laughs> I love all your work as well as I'm sure everyone does in this room. Thank you. Um, I am curious to know what everyone, other than Lauren, since you're Sailor Neptune, what everyone's like most related Sailor Scout is, and if you would like to try it. Oh my god, I love this question <laughs> so much. Tuxedo mask. <laughs> Boy's got the trip. Wait, I'm wearing wait, wait, wait. I used to watch Sailor Moon with my sister after like Dragon Ball. Yeah. Yeah. I literally buy suits to get a tailored custom. Uh, yes. Bill, the difference between you and Tuxedo Mask is that you actually do stuff. <laughs> you're more like a moonlight knight. I love, I love Tuxedo Mask, but he doesn't. You're more like so. moonlight knight. Tuxedo Mask sells your ego, and he's a moonlight knight. Yeah, moonlight knight. I don't, I don't know. It's okay. Like, you could I? Okay. Um. Okay. Let's see. Um, major for sure would be Sailor Mercury. Girl. <laughs> Can you tell us what colors they are? Yes, okay. So so major major would be Sailor Mercury, that's blue. Blue and white, like a like aqua blue. Oh no, no, no. Uh, icy blue. Icy blue, yeah, because Neptune's aqua well, blue. Uh, John I think John would probably be Sailor Uranus. <laughs> Sailor Uranus. Sailor Uranus. Sailor Uranus. Sailor Uranus is, is gold and blue. I didn't know there was a Sailor Uranus. There is. <laughs> She's my girl. 
Uh, Jim, you would be... Honestly, you're so cheery, I could see you as Chibi Moon. Honestly. Aww. Pink and white, pink and white. Bill, honestly, you're better than Tuxedo <laughs> You're better than Tuxedo Mask. I could see you as yes, queen. Jupiter. Yes. yes. I could see you as Jupiter. Jupiter. <laughs> Jupiter. Jupiter is green and pink. Olivia, you would be... Honestly, I could see you as Venus. I could see you as Venus. Yeah. 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 being sorted into her. Yeah. 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 Olivia, Olivia, I'm sorry, a Venus is orange and yellow. Yes. I want to be Artemis. You want, you can yeah. be Artemis? Yeah. Absolutely. I got You're familiar with it, absolutely. Thank you. I'm Artemis. And Jessica, you are 100% Sailor Pluto. You are 100% Sailor Pluto. Because Sailor Pluto is very much the, the most maternal out of all of them. Mm. So you are definitely a maternal person. And she is uh, dark green and black. Love it. My two favorite colors, yeah. no lie. <laughs> Sailor Mars. One thousand percent. Because she is a fiery gal. Yeah. And she is a, she is she is red and purple and she is not afraid to tell people you're being dumb when they're being dumb. I love it already. I know. And of course, Barry would of course be the one and only Usagi. Yeah. Uh, Sailor Moon herself. You're welcome. Thank Very you. Nice. Thank you for sorting us. I know. Um, how did you get into, like, how did you get to be Deku's De mom? Oh, oh, like how did I get cast? Yeah. Um, by that time, I had worked with Colleen Klinkenbeer, who directed. Um, I had worked with her on a couple of different shows. She was just a director who took an early interest in me and really supported me in casting when she could. And... She told me in our first um, recording session, like I didn't audition, she just called me in and cast me. I didn't even, she just gave me the show and I had no idea what it was that she had given me. No clue. And so the whole first, um, the whole first rehearsal, uh, we were kind of creating the voice and everything and I realized by the end of that rehearsal, like, okay, the show is so good. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was one of those lovely things where a director just decided, she was like, I couldn't hear anyone else's voice as this woman. And no director had said that to me before yet in my career. So it was kind of a big moment for me. It was like, yeah, I didn't have to audition, so. We were, we yeah. were just talking about that, actually. We were just talking about you playing Deku's mom. Are, are you comfortable sharing what you shared with me? Or no? You don't oh, about? Yes. Um, if you want. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't, really, I have a son who has autism. And we've been through quite a, quite a journey with him. He ended up, uh, he lives in a group home now. He's very well, he's great. But there were some hard, hard years. And um, I was recording My Hero um, not long after all of that went down. Um, and just the whole thing of having a child who wants so badly to be like everyone else and was struggling so hard. Um, yeah, I was crying in the first the first <laughs> recording session, so I think Colleen knew exactly what she was doing. I think you're perfect for the honor. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I've never teared up at all. <laughs> <laughs> know from the moment on like this is what I'm going to do like this is this is meant for me like how did you guys start like getting into all of this like voice acting and stuff like that I think it's just so freeing to play something you've never play in real life I mean you know it's just oh, yes. it's so fun to create these characters and work in shapes and I mean when are you going to be a dragon and a dog and a genie and a, all of those things. Sometimes in That's one day. Hot the weekend. Sometimes, sometimes in one day. One of my favorite things to do is just hop around the booth, booth and booth off and play a bunch of different things all at once. I think it's just freeing as, a, as an actor and as an artist. That's, it's just exciting. I think with me, I have one biological sister, but my parents were house parents at a children's home, so there were like 12 kids in my house at a time. Big house, seven bedrooms, not fancy. But I think just fighting for my parents' attention. I was always on stage like, look at me, look at me. I can do a voice. Nah. You know, it's, 
it kind of led to what you see today. Heavy trauma is very <laughs> So it makes all of us so very talented. There are yeah. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I did on camera and theater for a black minute, but y'all, I think it was my first booking in anime, which is a show called Gundam Thunderbolt, which is Cowboy Bebop with, Gun with Gundam Merge. Watch it, it's dope as hell. <laughs> so, you have this theater of the mind, whenever you either audition or you just record, because you, know, you, you become that, right? So, it was the first session that you kind of get yourself into the inner character. And my, I would have paused, my actually I was like, my ass is in a big ass robot right now. <laughs> yep, that's what I want to do. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's how that, it had me, it had me. Mine, um, I always, you know, like lots of kids like play soccer or like, you know, sports, ball, when they're growing up. <laughs> um, but my dad was an actor and my mom was a stage manager. So instead of playing any sports, I just did theater as a kid. And I did Susical the Musical when I was really Aww. little. And I played a Wickersham brother, and I had the most fun I have ever had. And then every show after that has been more fun than the last. So uh, I, you know, I was bred for it, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I've been into it since I was a kid. <laughs> Similar here. I was very, very tiny, four years old, when I was on stage for the first time, and people clapped, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do this forever and ever, so, okay. I, I was six foot two thirty at four years old. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, uh, for the longest time, wanted to be a marine biologist and study sharks. And uh, then I was 16 years old, my parents took me to New York, and I saw a Broadway show. Uh, it was not you, I'm sorry. And, um, it was a show called Joseph and the Amazing Technical yeah. Yeah. And, and it was, uh, it, it was the most amazing experience. Um, I can't remember her name now that played the narrator. Lori Beecham. Lori oh, Beecham. And the show, if you don't know the show, it's called Joseph, but the show's star is the narrator. And Lori Beecham, I was 16 and in love with Lori Beecham. And, I just, I grabbed the album in the lobby. Uh, it was my parents paid for it. I didn't grab it and run. <laughs> but we were on a family trip for like two weeks and I kept, everywhere we went, I'd, I'd go, is there a record player? And I played that record incessantly. And I kept telling my parents, I'm gonna be an actor, I'm gonna be an actor. And they're like, that's great. Uh, but the law school is where you need to start. <laughs> and uh, I just, I didn't know was the answer. And uh, so I went to college, got a degree in theater came home and started making a living as an actor, and it's hard, as anyone up here will tell you. It's a lot of uh, dry, you can't even pour the water for your ramen noodles, you just gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, so I just was an actor and, and doing it, and then it slowly morphed into just doing anime. But I will tell you this, this some, as a parent, this is so rewarding. I have three kids. That's not the rewarding part. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's true. But the, no, Olivia, Olivia became an actor. My son started college this year at Texas A&M Galveston to study marine, marine biology, biology with an emphasis in shark stuff. Yeah. My third kid wants to be a realtor. I have no idea where that came from. So, but I got two out of three, so I'm feeling pretty good. Character or the most fun character voice for Curly Dadon in One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> I love playing the Fever Demon in Shin Chan. Uh, <laughs> 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 I was the clone of Hitler in Shin Chan. That was kind of yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> Shin Chan has such great, so cool. random. <laughs> that that Miji joke. Just a the German kite. jogger. And Fart, well. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't even know what show it is, but one time I played a cat that didn't have any lip flaps, so that was my favorite. Yes. <laughs> Being claptrap is a lot of fun. Joel McDonald, the director, makes makes fun of me because it's true. It's I will down two Dr. Peppers or two diet Dr. Peppers uh, before the session, so I am fully caffeinated and going ninety to nothing and at max volume. So yeah, he's claptrap's done a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm on this kid's show called Bread Barbershop. 
and I have voiced various pies. <laughs> and I think my favorite character's name is Bully Pie. And he goes around and he, he knocks the whipped cream off of the top of the other uh, cupcakes. <laughs> My, my favorite thing, uh, it's, it's very not well known at all, it's um, uh, a, a live action kaiju movie called Gamera. And Gamera's, a, Gamera's a big turtle, and it's like, like Godzilla, and he destroys half the town in order to save it. And um, my friend Kyle Jones, who's a director at Sentai, and he's done Haikyuu, Food Wars, uh, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Um, <laughs> That's my and he, he, he was directing. He was directing this movie, and we did the whole movie. We dubbed it as it should have been done. But Kyle came up with an idea, and he submitted it, a uh, ten-minute version, and the Japanese loved it, and they said, "Please do the entire movie like this." So uh, we did the entire movie as a bunch of Texas rednecks. <laughs> and, it was so much, we didn't, no one got paid for it. We went in on Saturdays after hours and bought beer and pizza and just would sit in the, you know, like 10 of us in the studio and, hey, Jim, go in there and say something. <laughs> and okay, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and it's got a gazillion voice actors you know in it. But uh, one of my favorite lines is uh, Jay Hickman. Uh, he plays the, uh, the male lead and he's getting into his Jeep and he looks up and, <laughs> and he's like, that's a big ass turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we also, we, uh, Kyle uh, says the words, holy crap. He's like, holy crap! <laughs> and we took that one recording and like the Wilhelm scream, we just peppered it throughout the movie. <laughs> and it's, it's so, it was just so much fun. And it's like, that's, that's the kind of stuff I love to do. So that's for me the best. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Hello. 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 Uh, I was actually just curious, as an anime voice actor, how important location <coughs> is for you guys. Like, well, that's a question now. Wow. Ooh, yeah. uh, have mercy. Uh, <laughs> uh, go to, if I need to take a bullet on this one, as being a corporate man, I can. Do it. Uh, <laughs> let me say that the official stance is uh, all of us directors think it sucks ass, that people can't uh, record remotely from wherever they're at. We are living in a time when uh, people are communicating and working in various large to small businesses, multi-billion dollar companies. Uh, we have tried very hard to get the dog diversity going around there. Uh, those decisions are not made by any of us here. So, location right now is something of an amorphous blob that <laughs> do not go somewhere for the work because it might not be there. Go somewhere where you can establish what you need to succeed, uh, whether it's somewhere around where you can get training, whether it is a location where you can successfully uh, build up a revenue so that you can travel somewhere, take care of yourself there. So that's what I will say from an official stance of being like, if you want to do that, that's unfortunately how things are working with us here. Uh, but eventually when that changes, it should be anywhere that has great audio quality. And that's so. our time. And that's our time. Five minutes. Five minutes. As a as a director down at Sentai in Houston, I totally agree with what Anthony's saying. When uh, you know, it used to be. I mean, I can't tell you how many trips I made up to Dallas. It's a four and a half hour drive one way, and you drive up four and a half hours. You wake up at you know five in the morning, drive up there, work from ten a.m. to six p.m., and then turn around and drive home, and it's brutal. I've gone through multiple cars speeding tickets, you know, <laughs> countless boxes of fried chicken. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's unbelievable. But um, we've always had the technology. But during the pandemic, it was really embraced by everybody, by both studios, Sentai and Funimation, yeah. uh, to do remote recording. Mm -hmm. And everyone thought, this is so great. Thank you. I'm glad we could do this. And now uh, the, the pandemic is kind of in our rearview mirror somewhat, um, everyone was kind of like, so the remote recording's gonna stay, right? 
And to an extent it has, but I will tell you this, there is no substitution for being in the studio with the actor and the engineer and working as that team. And it's very difficult, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult to uh, get in if you're new on, with a remote session. Yeah. If they know who you are and they've worked with you for 20 years, that's different than somebody going, hey, I live in Columbus, Ohio, and I'd love to do work for you. Well, we have to do tests, we have to do studio tests. You know, does your equipment match what our needs are? Oh, you need to go spend $5,000 now and get up, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, and so it's not just, it's not as easy as you think it is because basically for remotes to work, it has to sound like you're in a studio and it just happens to be 2,000 miles away, but it's exactly the same setup we have at the record, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it is difficult, not impossible, but it, it's always better to be in the town where you are. And I guarantee you, just as a director, you know, there's a scheduling issue. Yeah. You know, getting people, what's your Steve, we're in different time zones. Mm -hmm. Where it's not, again, it's not impossible. It, it is a lot more difficult. And sometimes the director just goes, dude, I got a, I got a deadline. Um, I, I will give you an example, I was gonna cast, I even told her I was gonna cast her. She lives in California. And I got a call her now and go, I couldn't do it. I, I tried, but the, the, the schedule didn't match what, you were gonna probably be able to give me. So I just, you know, and she's amazing. And she's done remote stuff. It just, so it's always a lot more tricky to okay. do it that way. Thank Good you. Question. Thank Good you. Question. <laughs> two minutes, two more people. Trying to do it real quick. How are y'all doing? Doing hey, good. Nice. So Is that your first? question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'd say, um, if you guys could go back to the beginning of your career, is it, would you guys change anything, <laughs> give up any roles, take any more roles? I would have left my advertising job a hell of a lot sooner. That's nice. I would have, um, I used a, what's it called? A pseudonym. I used a pseudonym on a show that I wish I wouldn't have. I wish I would have, um, I've been doing this for a long time and it took me way longer to apply myself. Um, I probably could have been doing a lot better work for myself and getting into it a lot sooner. So I wish I just would have had a little bit better. That's why I say, location and knowing your, your scope, I wish I would have just invested more in myself and been like, no, let me jump in with that. It's kind of same. Mm. Uh, just, uh, I wish I would have believed in myself a little more and got, gone for things a little harder than I did. And I spread myself too thin. I, I wish I'd focused a little more. But a lot of that was just lack of s belief in myself. Uh, yeah. The discipline, you know. Spent a lot of time being scared, and you do it scared. It was like, oh, I could have done that. Yeah, anyway. it's such a waste yeah. of time. Yeah. yeah, it's a waste of time. Discipline for sure. I mean, I know I had when I was doing film and stuff. <laughs> I had <laughs> casting directors tell me, you know, dude, if you lost thirty pounds, you'd be way more castable. And then I discovered voiceover, and I was like, <laughs> screw you! <laughs> I'm going to the buffet. question really quick because I know that as soon as this person's done asking, no, 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 stay here, stay here, stay here. I just I'm, uh, oh, you're fine. We're, yeah, you're fine. Just want to let you all know that I believe after this, unless uh, other people have other panels, the majority of us are going to be going back to our tables in Artist Alley. I wanted to let you know because at the end of the panel, usually everybody stands up and we're like, wait, don't forget. I'm letting you all know now. So and you can ask us questions there if you forgot yes. anything. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. 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 Have, when you've been recording an emotional scene in an anime or a show or whatever, have you ever had to stop because you've been overwhelmed by emotions? Yes, yes. Bob Clay and Pell Down, save yourself. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that, 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 scene that scene hurts. Yeah. That scene hurts. Uh, it really, there were real tears. Oh. I've, never, I've never had to stop recording a scene, but I, I do remember one of the most emotional raw scenes that I have reported was actually in the most recent season of Attack on Titan. Mm. Um, I don't know if anybody saw the scene because most people stop the episode <laughs> before the ending credits, um, but it is during the ending credits after uh, there are two very big deaths that happen, I won't say which ones, um, and uh, Annie learns some pretty big news. 
and she just breaks down and she says, I'm tired of fighting. I, I don't want to fight anymore, not even Aaron. And I really wanted to do that scene justice because that's not a side of Annie we ever, ever see. So it was very emotional and very raw. And I definitely felt it because I just, I feel like, personally, I feel like uh, when you go on social media every day, it's a lot of the time it's just pure ugliness. It's pure ugliness, it's, it's, and sometimes it's beautiful, but there's a lot of fighting on social media. There's a lot of people shoving their opinions into people's faces and vice versa, and it's just constant battling. It's constant battling. And I think just when I was recording that scene, I was very tired from just seeing so many people so angry and so upset and, and you know, us surviving through the pandemic and all of that. It's just that the world is very tired right now. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt in that moment. And I, I just kind of, that's what I brought into the performance at least. So yeah, it was, it was a very important scene mm -hmm. for me to just kind of fo uh, focus on, so. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna try and make this quick, but uh, there's a show called Faraway Paladin. You can watch it on uh, a little thing called Crunchyroll. Mm -hmm. I play a character named Blood. And I'm gonna spoil the first five episodes for you. That makes it really quick. Blood's a, he's an undead skeleton. And he's raising this child named Will. He's trying to bring him up, bring him up and build up as much as possible. He's a real big father figure. And they don't really explain why until the fifth episode where Blood sacrifices himself. And he dies for his kid. And they go to a flashback to when he was alive with the woman who uh, was his wife. And they're going out there to take on this big bad, right? And they're talking about how the life they wanted to have, to, to marry, to have a child, and what they what they're gonna name their kid, and they wanted to name their kid Will. They're having this last which is right. My name is William, by the way. So it's rock because I'm playing this character, especially the fact that my father has cancer. And right now it's gonna hit me really hard and I just shouted because this dude's crying. He's like joyfully telling telling this girl she loves him, we're gonna get married, we're gonna have kids, we can live through this. And he doesn't. So uh, yeah. That wrecked my stuff. <laughs> Morning, Maya.